we have made it to the last chapter. I know somebody wants to say woohoo. You've worked very hard and you should be very, very proud of yourself. You've done really good work this semester. So we're going to continue picking up right where we left off in chapter 11 with that completed worksheet. And now we're going to take those next steps to prepare the financial statements for a merchandise company using a perpetual inventory system. So remember, our, we have our three financial statements, the income statement, the statement of owner's equity, and the classified balance sheet. Those have to be prepared in order. And then we have to journalize and post those adjusting and closing entries. We already did the adjusting entries on the worksheet, but we actually have to post them to the, we have to really journalize them and post them to the T accounts. And then we'll prepare that post-closing trial balance. So remember the income statement, we really need to know what were our net sales. Now net, anytime we see the word net, net always means subtraction. So remember net sales are sales minus our sales returns and minus our sales discounts. We want to know how, what were our returns? Did we have a lot of returns from customers? What was cost of goods sold? Um, so our format of our income statement, now this is what we call a multi-step income statement, and a multi-step income statement is appropriate to use by a merchandiser, a company that sells goods, because it gives us some really important data. So you notice we start with net sales, again, that sales minus sales returns and allowances minus sales discounts, so the sales minus the contra accounts, because we always subtract the contras. Then we subtract cost of goods sold. Now, yes, cost of goods sold is an operating expense, but it's such an important operating expense that we pull it out and we list it separately. So net sales minus cost of goods sold gives us gross profit, or you may actually hear this called gross margin. Gross profit and gross margin mean the same thing. For those of you that are taking economics or have taken economics, you talk about a lot of margins in economics, not the same kind of margin you talk about in economics. Margin is another word for profit, so it's similar in that way, but don't start thinking marginal cost, marginal price, that kind of thing. Those are different. So gross profit minus all of our operating expenses gives us net income from operations, or you may hear this called operating income or income from operations. Then we're going to add any other revenue and subtract any other expenses. Now other means not normal operating, so not related to our main line of business. These would be maybe things we did on the side. We'll talk about those in a minute. And that gives us, again, net income. So normal operating expenses are exactly that. They are normal day-to-day -day expenses, whatever kind of normal expense you would have in your business. Typically, these are broken into what we call selling and administrative, although I don't personally feel that it's really important that you separate them into selling and administrative. It is helpful in practice. So salaries expense, delivery expense, advertising, depreciation, insurance, rent, utilities, supplies, all of those are operating expenses. Those are just normal day-to-day -day bills. So here we can see our income statement. Now notice we start with our three-line heading, name of our company, the name of the statement, and then the date. Remember the income statement is always for a period of time. And so it says for the year ended. Now remember we like to use columns, but the columns don't mean debit and credit. Remember the columns mean individual amounts here in the first one. These are individual amounts. And then the second column means totals and subtotals. So here we can see we've got gross sales. We've got our less sales returns and allowances. We didn't have any sales and then sales discounts. So we put the individual sales returns and allowances and sales discounts in the first column. And then we put the total here in column two. Now I want to encourage you to put parentheses around this total of the sales returns and allowances and sales discounts so that you remember to subtract those. So sales minus those sales returns and allowances and sales discounts gives us net sales. 
Then we have our cost of goods sold. And again, I want to encourage you to put parentheses around that. So net sales minus cost of goods sold gives us gross profit. So here you can see we've listed all of our operating expenses. We didn't bother separating them by selling an administrative, but we've got them all listed there in the first column and then the totals in the second column. So again, I'm going to put parentheses around those. And so that gives me income from operations or now I have my other stuff. Now other is anything that we would do on the site. So remember, we're a wholesale clothing company, but we're renting this office space to somebody else it's just a little side hustle to make a few extra bucks a month we're not in the business of renting office space so that rental income is other income it's listed down here now the other thing that is always other according to gap those generally accepted accounting principles is interest whether it's interest revenue or interest expense interest is always considered an other so interest is always going to go down here in your other so again I'm going to put parentheses around this interest expense because we always subtract expenses so here we see the rental income which is revenue we add that we subtract our expenses and we end up with a negative $100 over here so again I want you to be really careful and put those parentheses in so a positive 200 of rental income a negative 300 of in income interest expense gives us a negative 100 so I'm subtracting in this case from income from operations to get my net income now remember if rental income had been more than interest expense then that would be a positive number and we would add it so we're just subtracting it here because the expense is greater than the income Now, remember, we have to do the statement of owner's equity that reveals the changes in the capital account. And again, we're going to pull those numbers straight off of those adjusted trial balance columns of the worksheet. So here we have our three line heading. Notice our name of our company, the name of our statement, and the date. This date is for a period of time. In fact, it's for the exact same period of time as the income statement. So we started with our capital balance from the worksheet we add in net income that came from the income statement we subtract those withdrawals I'm going to put parentheses around that again and that gives us our ending capital balance now this ending capital balance is now going to be used on the balance sheet so remember the balance sheet lists our assets our liabilities and our equity it's called the financial snapshot. It gives us a, a snapshot of the picture of our financial picture. So we're going to classify our assets and liabilities based on how quickly we are going to either use them or pay them off. So current assets are assets that we're going to use up, convert to cash or sell within one year. These are listed in what we call order of liquidity. Liquidity means how quickly and easily we can convert it to cash. What that really means is that cash is always the first asset you'll see listed. It's always cash, usually accounts receivable is second, and inventory is third. And then after that, it kind of doesn't really matter. But cash, accounts receivable, inventory in that order. So here we see our current assets again we've got our columns we're not looking at we're going to look at the whole picture in a minute but we've got our individual amounts listed in the first column starting with cash then we had petty cash then accounts receivable then inventory and then we had supplies and the rest of that prepaid insurance that we haven't used up yet we've got a single line to subtotal and our totals put in the second column so plant assets are long-lived assets, also called property plant equipment or capital assets or fixed assets. You'll sometimes hear them called fixed assets. Remember, these are assets that we are using in the production. We're using them in our business. And if any of those assets get depreciated, which everything except for land does, then don't forget to subtract that accumulated depreciation account right underneath the asset, its partner account. 
So here we see we've got our store equipment and then right underneath it we've got accumulated depreciation. Again, I'm going to put those parentheses around it to remind us to subtract. And so then we have our net book value in the second column. And so we've added our current assets and our long-term assets to get our total assets. And then don't forget to double underline at the end. So liabilities we're going to break also into current and long term. Current liabilities are debts that we're going to pay within the next year. Usually we list them in the order that we're going to pay them, but most of the time you don't know that as a student, so just get them in the right category. Now, if we have long-term debt, like let's say we have our mortgage, but we have to make payments on that over the next year, then the portion that's due over the next year is listed as a current asset, and then everything else would be in the long-term section. So here we can see we have a lot of current liabilities. We have our accounts payable, our federal income taxes, the Social Security, the Medicare, the state income taxes, the FUDA and SUDA, all of those monies that we withhold from our employees' paychecks, those are all current liabilities to us because we have to turn around and remit them to the appropriate government agencies. Then we have salaries payable. We have there's that unearned rent account, that liability account where we took that our renter's money in advance and then we have the current portion of our mortgage so the rest of the mortgage will be in the long term this is just the portion that's due over the next year now again our long-term liabilities are things that are due more than one year from now so here we've got our mortgage that's really the only thing that we had long term so we've got our current liabilities plus our long term and add those up that gives us our total liabilities and then our owner's equity account, we're just going to pull from the owner's equity statement that we did right before. And then we'll add that with the liabilities and get total liabilities and owner's equity. And we're going to, of course, double underline at the end.